Hi, and welcome back to our next video in our Container Security Fundamentals series. In the last video, what we did was start to look at Linux namespaces, how they are used by containers to isolate resources visible to a given container, and also took a bit of a detailed look at the mount namespace, which isolates file systems. In this video, what we're going to do is continue to look at the Linux namespaces that are used by containers, and in detail, we're going to look at the process namespace. So let's just remind ourselves a little bit of how namespaces work in Linux. There are currently eight namespaces used by Linux, and each of those isolates a different resource. Of the eight, six are currently used by Docker by default, the mount, PID, net, IPC, UTC, and cgroup namespaces. There's also the user namespace, which can be used by Docker, but isn't by default, and the time namespace, which isn't currently used by Docker, but probably will be in future. The one we want to take a bit more of a look at in detail today is the PID namespace, which isolates processes visible to a container. So let's move over to a terminal. We've got our standard Linux host here with Docker running on it. And what we're going to do is first, we're going to start a new container. So we're going to do Docker run. We're going to give this container a name and we're going to run the busybox image and we'll run the top command inside that container. So that gives us a container up and running on the machine. Let's first get a note of what the process ID of that um, container is. So what we can do is we can do docker inspect and then we can pull out the PID from the container. And this tells us that our container process ID is 2973. Let's take a copy of that because we'll need it later on. So first off, the question is, what does that look like on the outside of the standard process list on the host? So to do that, we'll just run the psef command. And down here, you can see we've got process ID 2973 and we've got the top command. So as we've seen in our earlier videos, it looks like just any other process on the machine. But let's think about what that looks from inside the process namespace. To do that, what we're going to do is we're going to use the nsenter command. nsenter, very useful for running commands inside namespaces, so it can be used for things like interacting with containers. So we'll run the command sudo nsenter, and we'll give it our process ID. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll run the psef command using nsenter. So yes, this will show us the process table inside the process namespace, what's happening inside the container. And what we see is a completely different process list than we saw on our host. In this process list, our top command is actually PID1. So it's both PID1 inside the namespace and PID2973 outside the namespace. And then we also got PSEF that we're running inside. So there, that way we can see the process list in our container. If we want to actually use process namespaces without using containers, we can make use of the unshare utility, which is quite handy for running things in namespaces. So to demonstrate how you might use the process namespace using unshare, we can just do sudo unshare and we'll do pid. These are just uh, some swip flags we need to make this work. And we'll run a bash shell. So now we have actually started up a new process namespace without using containers at all. And if we run psef again inside this, we can see it looks very similar to how it looked inside our container in that we have a completely different view of processes on the host. This command here has only isolated the process namespace and hasn't set up all the other namespaces and the other restrictions that containers put in place, but it does demonstrate that we can use a uh, process namespace just you know, in a day-to-day -day utility. So another thing we can look at when we're talking about how the process namespace works is we can look at how we can use it, this feature, this process namespace, when we're debugging and troubleshooting containers. To demonstrate that, what we're going to do is we're going to run a new container. We'll give this one a name, we'll call it web server, and we'll use the Nginx image. Now with Docker, what you can actually do is you can run a new container which joins the PID namespace of our web server container very handy for debugging because it lets you see the processes that are running inside this original container. So if I want to start up my debugging, what I can do is I do docker run minus it, 
we'll give this a name debug. And then what we do is specify this flag here. And it says for our process namespace, we would like to be in the process namespace of a container called web server. And we'll pick an image to use. This is one of my test images that has a lot of debugging tools in it. And that drops us into a shell. So now if we run PSEF, what we can see is not just our bash shell and our PS command, but also the processes for the other container. Because if you think about how this is working at underlying level, all we've done from a namespace perspective is actually add this process, the new one, to the same process namespace as we did for our web server. This is very handy and it kind of shows some of the flexibility of using Linux namespaces for this kind of function. So hopefully that was useful information about how you can use the PID namespace. Please do come back later to our next video where we'll be talking about the next namespace, which will be network, which will be used for network isolation. And if you'd like any more information about this topic, please do visit our Security Lab site where we've got blogs which go into quite a lot more detail as well. Thanks.